Hey, so if you watched the last video, I built a tool which um, improves the tracking of, uh, impo improves the output that we get from live link face for metahumans. Um, the tool allows you to sort of set the minimum and maximum ranges of your facial movements um, based on the AR kit blend shapes that come out. Um, it's no by no means finished, but it gives you a chance to have a look at the inner workings and, and have a play around with it. Apply it your own projects or use it directly if you want to. So this video will show you how to set it all up and have a play. Okay, to get started, first we're going to need a project. Um, so I'm just going to call this, uh, I don't know, test project. Uh, blank one's fine. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because uh, most of you guys will already have a project. Um, so I'm just going to set one up and we're going to quickly go through um, the basics of bringing a metahuman into a project. All right, we are in an Unreal Engine 5 project now. So next you want to click Content and click Quixel Bridge. Now, if you don't have the Quixel Bridge plugin, search Unreal Engine 5 Quixel Bridge Setup. Quixel Bridge is um, integrated into Unreal Engine 5, uh, but is separate in 4. But there's some really good steps on how to do that. I won't cover it off here because it'll, it'll take the video will end up being way too long. So we've got Bridge open. Uh, we click Sign In. We, bring, um, we want to log in here. Okay, once you're logged in, uh, you'll see this little icon show up here, little person, uh, and it'll show your latest MetaHumans. Uh, it makes sure, obviously, you have to have a MetaHuman er uh, creator early access account to have access to the MetaHumans. Um, and then you click on the MetaHuman you want, and you click Add. Once it's all done, you'll see a new MetaHumans folder in your content folder, and you've got all the assets within uh, these two folders. Now that you've brought in the digital human, uh, you want to uh, enable a few more plugins. So edit plugins, um, live link. So mine's already enabled, click enable on that one. Uh, and then the other one is AR kit, Apple AR kit and AR kit face support. So you're gonna click enable on that and click restart now. Right, the next thing we need to do is we need to get the puppeteer plugin, puppeteer as I'm calling it. Uh, so we've got github.com, victornz, puppeteer, link will be in the video description, um, and click on code, click download zip. So download it somewhere, doesn't matter where you download it. Open the file, uh, you want to extract it to um, your plugins folder. So double click on the puppeteer main, we just want this uh, folder in here. Click Extract To, uh, find your project folder. So mine is um, So you want to extract it into your uh, Projects Plugins folder. So if it doesn't already exist, which it probably won't, is you want to click New Folder, type Plugins, click OK, and extract it into there. So what your folder structure should look like now is you should have Plugins, and you've got the readme and puppeteer inside your plugins folder under your project folder okay once you've got the plugin uh in the plugins folder you want to reopen the project and you should see puppeteer content here now if you don't see puppeteer content in there go edit plugins type in puppeteer and click enabled and that will uh, bring that up bring the plugin up so in puppeteer content uh, select the folder, double click on main level, and that will open up the level that has um, all the blueprints and things uh, set up inside of it, as well as the UI set up in the level blueprint. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is you need to go into the world outliner. You need to select the puppeteer actor here. Well, you don't need to select it, but this is the puppeteer actor. The puppeteer actor spawns the uh, metahuman has the metahuman, um, you know, the uh, actor in there, uh, the static mesh, uh, sorry, the skeletal meshes and all that sort of thing. So we need to set this to spawn the correct metahuman because um, when I set it up as a plugin, um, it sets up, to, it uses a particular uh, metahuman actor class that I was using. So um, if you go down the bottom here, default metahuman actor class, you just need to select the one that you've imported. So whatever the name is of your metahuman, you type it in here. Mine was called Danny. So I click on that, and then now we've got the um, MetaHuman Actor class set up. Next, uh, we need to set up the animation blueprint. So the uh, MetaHuman comes with a default animation blueprint. We want to use the Puppeteer one because it has a whole bunch of stuff around dri driving the um, the curves for controlling the rig. Now, um, if you go into Puppeteer Content, go Blueprints, 
you'll see Puppeteer Animation Blueprint. Now, mine is actually set up at the moment, but that's, I think, because it's found the um, same blueprint I was testing with when I first set up the plugin. Um, what you want to do here is you want to uh, double click on this. And I think what I'll do uh, for you, which I can't show right now because it's not doing it for me, um, it will ask you to select a skeleton. Um, so the skeleton you want to search for is face archetype. Once you've done that, click compile on the animation blueprint and make sure that there's no errors in compilation. Now we set the MetaHuman Blueprint to use that uh, anim uh, animation blueprint. So if we open up Blueprint Danny, um, or sorry, Blueprint, whatever the name is of your MetaHuman, um, you can search for it through the Puppeteer Actor here, uh, which you would have set your Blueprint here. Click on the magnifying glass, open the Blueprint. Um, and in here, you want to click on the class defaults. And in here, uh, sorry, not the class defaults, you want to click on the skeletal mesh for face over here. That's for the face, the head. Um, and on the right hand side, you'll see anim class. And it says, uh, well, this will say face anim BP on yours. Uh, so you want to change that to puppeteer anim BP underscore C. After that remapping to the face archetype, you should see it in that list. Uh, and select that. Okay, once you've got all that set up, you should be able to just press play. Get it going. That's good. We've got a bit of movement here. All right. Uh, so excuse the low frame rate. My computer is overheating. So it's not really dealing with things very well, but we'll s we can still show you how the interface works and hopefully your computer will run better than mine. So press one to bring up the interface. Uh, F11 to full screen. Shift F1 if the mouse is not showing to bring the mouse up. Um, and you've got a whole bunch of calibration controls here. So um, the way it works is you're just mapping um, the range of values from ARKit to the uh, values in um, the uh, MetaHuman rig. So if you think about it, if you raise your brows as high as you can, um, the ARKit value, uh, wherever it browse in or up is, browse up, there we go, browse in or up, uh, as high as I can go, so it's currently telling the rig to raise it only up to 0 0.6, 0 0.7. But I've actually raised my brows up as high as I can go. Um, so really it should, oh, there we go, I've moved my hair out of the way. Um, is that 0.8? It should actually be 0 uh, 1.0, right? Because I'm raising my eyebrows as high as I can. So we now map the max to 0 0.7. Oh, let's see here, uh, max 0 0.84. So basically when the AR cut is giving us a value of 0 0.84, the control rig is at a value of one. You can see my brows are going much higher. Now, if I bring the brows down, same thing. We're at 0 0.7 here. We made that max at 0 0.66 and 0 0.67. Now the uh, MetaHuman rig, I'll just tweak that a little bit. MetaHuman rig is at maximum value at 0 0.74. So now the brows are at a much wider, uh, much better range of motion. So that's pretty much how it works. You can go through each one. The minimum is uh, neutral, basically. At neutral, at resting, what is the zero value? Uh, well, what is a neutral value? You can see some of these. The bar is actually showing I'm currently doing a little bit of browse down, but I'm actually completely neutral here. So what we want to tell the system is that uh, when I'm seeing a value of 0.11, that is actually neutral. Uh, the control rig should not be driving any of the browse down control at all. So we just set minimum. So I get to a neutral position, tap minimum, tap minimum. And so now that will mean that whenever it's at a value of 0.06, the control, um, the metahuman control should actually be at a value of uh, zero. There's another faster way of doing it. You can click set neutral. So look at the camera, neutral pose, click set neutral, and it sets the minimums for everything. And that is how that works. You can go through. Now, you can turn off particular controls. Uh, so I can select none. And you can do, you know, just the squint controls. So we can isolate specific controls and work on those. So we've got a 0.5 value when I squint as hard as I can. Let's make that the maximum. So now we're getting a much better squint. You can see it's going a full range of movement now. 
Um, and then we can turn on select all. Auto calibration is a, a feature that I didn't really finish. You can turn it on, um, but basically what it does is it automatically sets the minimum and maximum values based on what you do with your face. So when you turn it on, it just goes nuts. But then you move your face around as much as you can so you can kind of get through the range of minimum and maximum of your face, you go through a range of motion, and that will set the minimum and maximum values. A raising calibration just sets everything back to the default values of 0 and 1, and uh, you can save calibration. When you save the calibration, uh, you can only save one calibration at the stage. Maybe we'll change it later on to be able to save multiple files. But save calibration means that it saves all these minimum and maximum values. And then next time you run it, you can click load calibration and it loads all the values. So that's it for now. Um, I might do another video if people are interested on how I put everything together and just explain some of the blueprint work that's there. But um, this should be enough to get you started. If there are any issues with um, getting it going, um, feel free to um, comment and uh, I'll do my best to help uh, resolve the issues for you guys. All right, cheers for watching and um, have fun.